Meanings are One. lost, insights are Alan, lost. Alan, the the word mush name. mush, like mush mush malamute with the dog teams and stuff, that comes from Quebec where they used to tell the horses to mouse, mouse, walk, walk, and that turned into mush mush. That's yeah. that's big time way out there. And we have what they call in French a bagus. Well, that's from English. That's a back house. It used to be the outside shed for going to the bathroom. It was called the back house. But the French they call it a bagus. It's just a yeah. real derogation of an English word adopted into French. Uh, Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video. Most importantly though, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Nummy, Alan, uh, who else we got? Warren, Jimbo, Laurie, Mark, Ranty Flat Earth, Arwin and the Plain Truth. Good to have you all. Hello, Alvin. Your audio is taking a, a dive there, Nathan. It's because I'm looking around and doing things. I've got a. This will be only be a shorter show today because I've got a, a Spanish class with my kid a bit later. So I've rushed through the gap and we'll have a bit of a show and then. Nathan, stay focused. Come on. I'm trying. When you say Spanish class, do you mean Spanish class for you, Nathan, or no, for my little kid? Hablo Espanol. Si. You mean your hija. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so I've got a Spanish class after after this stroke after the stroke after the show finishes. Do you speak Spanish? Me? No, not at all. So Alan has uh, controlled the last hour. Let's gang up on him now. Alan, show us the curve. Show me the money. Myself and Mr. Musk will take you to see it. Money? Mm. We'll show you the curve. How much do you need? You I'd say about show us your ass? 100 grand. How much? 100 grand. Okay, when it, I have to start uh, a GoFundMe. Who's in, in on it? <laughs> you may as well. Everybody else on here is an e-beggar. Oh, you sarcastic git. <laughs> I might start. Um, I've got a GoFundMe, people listening. I'm saving up for egg custards. <laughs> egg custards? <laughs> you might well, want to have Jay Toll and Media rubbed out or something there, you know, because yeah, he got some what about nice IR ice cream? footage, hundreds of miles of flat. So I don't know where you're going with the hundred thousand dollar go fund me to show your curve i mean that was a joke jimbo oh, I, see. I don't know if you remember those no i i probably missed out some of that <laughs> something got lost in translation there i think yeah the laughter yeah, my bad. <laughs> well the punch line <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, did we do housekeeping yet we didn't do housekeeping although uh, we did get started off by mark he asked for any signs of curvature from alan that's where this conversation started Ah, right. Come on, Alan. Answer the question. In the fruit section of the uh, shopping malls, you got bananas. There's curve Earth there. Curve. Always Earth curve, Jimbo. 
my bad. Banana Earth. It, it only exists in Alan's mind. Wow. Uh, axial rotation. Any signs of axial rotation? Of the Earth-based variety, Earth Jimbo. <laughs> Edwin Sarkassian tested for it, and he didn't find any. He had to run for his life. No. Anybody? Alan, any signs of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Alan, Alan, Alan. Sorry, guys, I'm having an egg custard. Fair enough. It's the wrong season for ice cream, eh? What about the distance pay him to the sun? To join Ed when shooting a fifty cal up in the air. Let's send Alan to join Edwin for a test. Only an idiot would fire a fifty cal in the air. How come? Why? Because the bullet will come back down and hit you. Are you aware what velocity the bullet will be doing coming back? Well, we're supposed to have axial rotation moving you and the gun out from underneath that bullet. How long does the bullet spend in the air? One minute and fifty seconds. And you think it'll land on your head? Mm, if you're at the equator, you should be 32 miles away with the Earth's rotation, axial rotation. I suggest you go and try it. Oh, it has been done by Mr. Edwin Sarkassian. You can go check his video. Uh, Alan, that's well thought out. You don't have an answer for that, do you? Except for egg custard. Do I have an answer for what? Firing a 50 cal bullet in the air? You should be uh, you're an absolute Yeah, idiot. it falls straight down. That's right. No, it doesn't. That's why you have to take cover. Yeah, it is. No, it isn't. Yeah, that's why you have to take cover. No, it when doesn't. When you shoot straight up, yeah. Go yeah, watch it is. the video. It does not hit him on the head. Wear a really thick helmet. Yeah, you've got to be an idiot to do that. No, it lands about about 20 feet away from him in the bushes. You hear it land. You never see it, though, do you? You hear it. Can you sense us before? No. <laughs> Not in this case, you'd be dead if it hits you on, the head of the, on your head. How's it going with the camera anyway, Ranty? Brilliant, thank you. You fell for that one, Ranty. He was trying to divert. Diversion. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> what? Are you not trusting our friendship, Ranty? We don't have a friendship. I thought we did. No, not at all, mate. Me and you on the pier, eating cockles and mussels. Having mm. an egg custard. Egg custard for afters, before a bit of crab. Hmm. Hmm. Come on, then, show us some of your new footage. Next question. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, show us evidence? some actual rotation firing bullets in the air. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? There's no distance to the sun. Would be impossible to measure something that's maybe virtual and really relative to the observer's point of view where it actually is as a virtual object or, you know, something that has no mass. Well, nobody else want to chase rainbows? Any more for any more? Chase the sun. What about evidence of gas pressure without a container? Uh, never. Not in real worlds. Not in models. Not in physical theory. I'd like to know where after 100,000, 110,000 feet, it goes from a very low PSI, like 0 0.0045 PSI and minus 50 degrees, to core of vacuum. Where's that so-called, you know, transition? Because vacuum is measured in tor, PSI, the positive pressure. It's not measured in tor, it's measured in PSI. When they send up the balloons, 100,000 feet, they're measuring PSI at 0 0.0045. That's not a vacuum. It's not a vacuum measurement. It's a PSI measurement. So where yeah. do we go from there to tors? Alan, what do you think about the inflatable module on the ISS? What do I think of what, Nummy? What do you think about the inflatable module on the ISS? You think oh, I've not seen it. You got a link? Okay, I'll find one. Do you not think the ISS exists? 
the Jiffy Pop Hotel on the side that they're supposed to have blown up and made a hotel room out of it? I think it exists in a sound studio. Oh, okay. But how, but do you think it exists it, in does a it pool. seem reasonable to you that they kept that an inflatable module could work in in uh, space against the uh, vacuum of space? Out of interest, what do you think that Jaron took a photograph of then? I don't know what that is. I think that well, actually, in fact, there's some papers that have shown that they can use maser technology to project uh, hologram holographic like projection images into the atmosphere. Wow. Well, so it could be that, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think that it's what they show uh, on the NASA videos with guys floating around on harnesses. I don't think that those two phenomena are linked. There's no R in NASA. Did I say, what did I say? NASA. But I think you're just mishearing me. I'm yeah, I dropped the link. I dropped the link in the side chat there. Thank you very much. I'll take a look. This is from 2016. No, it's still up there. I just went with the first one that I saw. I figured you would have heard about this being such a uh, proponent of NASA's fine work. Let me let me take a look. I'll take a look at the NASA. The, the NASA. NASA. Come on, cut the crap. What what do you make of this NASA blow up? module just having a look give me five minutes here's a better link nasa thank you talk among yourselves a big I, think, I think it's for a big batch of space popcorn for like a big party with aliens and stuff <laughs> big jiffy pop yeah. popcorn batch it, in there. what i wonder though is if they can make an inflatable module for the iss why can't they make a balloon that can go up to a million feet if they have the material that they can create something that's inflatable within a vacuum, doesn't explode, but it's flexible, why don't they use that to make atmospheric balloons that can go higher than 120,000 feet? Doesn't really make sense. Because they say that they can only send those, those um, weather balloons up so high, but because once the pressure differential becomes so great that there's no material that won't explode against the vacuum. So... But it seems like they've, <clears throat> according to what they're saying, they've defeated that limitation by creating this module. So it doesn't really follow that they wouldn't be able to make balloons that would go higher than that. And I mean, if we could send a balloon up to say 500,000 feet, then we would be, there would be no doubt left about whether we could see a curve or not. <clears throat> I mean, we should be able to see it at 120,000 feet. Of course we can't for some strange reason, but... <clears throat> I don't do really you understand? It. Oh, do you understand that the module is in orbit, like it orbits, which weather balloons do not do? What? It is in orbit. The module is in orbit. It's you, you, you believe it's in orbit, so okay. That's, okay, so what does that have to do with uh, it? It still has to deal with the the uh, the negative pressure of the so-called vacuum. Sure. Right? And it's inflected in structure that are flexible material. Like, you know, do you not see the problem with that? That if they could create such a device that would operate that way, that should be they should be able to make a balloon that would do something similar, no? But then it would Yeah, be, like here on the ground, put this material like in, in a vacuum and suck it all to hell and it shouldn't break or pop or anything. Yeah. They should be able to demonstrate it to us right here. Or magic material. But it would be too heavy to act as a balloon if they use the same material. Not too heavy to test in their nice big vacuum chamber and show us. Well, their primary motivation is not to convince conspiracy. They still have to test these products and they still can film them while they're testing them. You can't just say, well, this will work in space. I'd have to put it in a total vacuum and make sure it worked. Why do you think all of this stuff or something? Come on, give it a break. Give they it have to have a what the magic 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 and it's just a balloon. A balloon. You're reinforcing your own beliefs. Fantasy. Talking over each other, I can't hear either of you. So, so well, time this. So my microphone might on at a time. Just no connection, maybe shitty. So, 
if my voice is breaking up, just let me know and I'll maybe leave or something because my internet connection is actually quite shitty. It's so perfect. just say to me if that happens too much. Damn perfect. Yeah, it wasn't anything on your end. It was just talking over, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I realized that. I was just saying that, you know, if you're going to test the material, you don't need a huge thing. You make a balloon or, you know, football size or, you know, put it in a vacuum. You test it. But don't blow up in your vacuum. Good for space. How hard is it to film it and show us? We're paying for it anyway. It's all excuses. Oh, they're not really concerned about us when they're doing this. Oh, bullshit. Come on. It's all propaganda for us. All actors. Anyway. But look, okay, so here's like another thing. Believe. Barney. If you look, I'm going to drop this photo. This is the photo of the so-called burst test, which they did in a pool, which is the reverse situation of the stresses that would be on the thing when it was in space. And, it would, and not even close to the same kind of pressure. I mean, I think that the ISS is, exists, but it's at the bottom of a swimming pool on some military base somewhere. Okay, I've had a look. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I'm not sure I'd be the first person to um, open the hatch. What's it made of? I don't know. It's hard to get a... They don't seem to want to say exactly what it's made of. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be several layers of different materials. Yes, it looks multi-layered. So it's like plastic and uh, aluminum, probably. I don't know. In reality, it's probably just going to be a steel tanker inside of that pool. Flexible things that can expand and remain sealed in space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These are magicians, so we have to have faith. They say it's real and it's up there. We got to believe it, right? Alan, do you believe that that thing is real? Yes. Why? I've, I can find no reason for them to lie. But do you think it's possible that they're lying? It could be. Okay. But what, why? Why would they lie? Money. Money, money, money. But Mo I think there's a lot of reasons that, that are not just financial. I think that, you know, one of the motives that I suspect of NASA is that it's about pushing this a kind of futurist agenda where by creating all of this uh illusion that mankind has developed this the technology to do these amazing things that human beings are more willing to accept more change yes no no but i'm an hour social engineering aspect of it indeed if this is a crime that's been committed a motive is secondary. We, we first of all have to establish that an actual crime has been committed. Yeah, well, I'm just speculating. I'm, just, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not asserting that that is the motive or not. Yeah, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just responding to other conversations that I have. Why would NASA lie to us? Well, it, motive is secondary. It's whether they have or not, and there's there's plenty of evidence to show that they have lied to us. Motive is People not enough. Business lie all the time. Yeah, and motive is not enough to establish a fact. It's it's the evidence of the fact or whether it's a lie or not, and then motive comes into it. Yeah, and ly lying is a very common human behavior. People lie all the time. People are always on guard against being lied to. Yeah. Mm. And there's so, also as that all depends motive, on who you look. deal with and how you conduct yourself, Nomi. The People in general are pretty anti-war. None of us like war and slaughter. And if NASA is just a front for money that really goes into the American military machine and this, you know, infrastructure, then that could be a reason why they have this fake But it's a, it's a worldwide thing. I mean, I think that what NASA reveals yeah, but that's is that also an overgeneralization because there are swaths of people out there that do like suffering to create suffering and genocide out there unfortunately and many of them hang in upper circles 
where they can hide behind power. It's just a fact of humanity, unfortunately. So, but there's not just NASA in space. There's 72 other agencies. Are, are they all in on it? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's yeah. not just the it's not just the United States interest. I mean, NASA basically demonstrates that there's a, there's a global government in place that's colluding to strategic yeah. purposes to facilitate the social engineering operation of. Yeah. Okay, no, me. Let's let's say that's true. Let's say that's true. So, seventy-two agencies. How many employees between them all? Not many. Not as many as you. It's compartmentalized. Think. Need to know, but need to know basis. You should know that. Give me a wild, uh, give me a wild stab. Give me a number. Uh, yeah. Half a dozen each. Six, six people each. Six people. Six people at NASA. Yeah. No, 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 no. You, you thousands. Said It'll be thousands. Global. 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 Seventy-two yeah. agencies. Six yeah. people at Thousands each. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I think that it's very hard to... I don't know. Let's, you it's can laugh at that, to, Alan. What's the point in taking what? guesses at this? The thing is, is that if it's fake, then these people, the people that we see oh. in the media are ostensibly actors, right? And the, that point, the, the point I was trying to make there, or illustrate, was if there's 72 agencies, let's say, conservatively a million people, where are all the whistleblowers? I don't think there's anywhere close to a million people. Where are all the whistleblowers? Well, what about all these people that are coming out from the military okay. for flat earth? Well, there are your whistleblowers right there. I take a moment to They're add just our waiting for the right Stephen opportunity. Hopkins slash Einstein to uh, future stuff. Um, there's a, a guy out Caltech Outreach who apparently has solved one of the most complex math problems. It happens to be a Bitcoin blockchain. But anyway, he's this new genius that's a cross between Stephen Hawkins and uh, Albert Einstein. And he's going to be in and out of flat earth and serving us shit sandwiches in the media and stuff. Um, his name is Spiros Michalis or Michalis. But anyway, he's the new in the spotlight, cross between the now gone, apparently, Stephen Hawkins and the permanently gone Albert Einstein. So just All right, so I've got, a little, for... I've got a little tidbit uh, backstory on that because I spoke to him in person at the premiere of Behind the Curve. And uh, I asked him, I said, okay, look. You're falling away. You totally faded. You're breaking up. You roboted out. We were back. Okay. Travis, start again. Is that any better? Start with the story again. Is that yeah, any you're better? Back. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. You have an essential point and we all missed it. No, no, I, I didn't get there yet. Anyway, it was after the uh, movie, after Behind the Curve, I talked to Spiro in person. And uh, I worked with him, and I just got tired of his BS. I said, okay, look, just give me your best argument for the ball earth. I said, I don't want an explanation. I don't want a story. I want your best proof. He said, well, just imagine the, st the, way, just imagine the way the story begins way, way back in time and... You wouldn't believe it. I let him go for like two minutes. I said, you're telling me a story. I said, I want evidence. What do you see? And he said, well, he said, you have to admit it's kind of magical. <sighs> now, now I, wow. I did not have him on camera. I wished I did. So that's all hearsay. But that was that was this guy. That was his best answer for me. But equally, Travis... Um, your Bible's a story. Well, That's I'm a calling red herring, him an and that actor. Has nothing to do. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about, Alan. He has no clue of Shut physics, up, and every word out of his mouth is babble and nonsense. And that's what people are going to deal with as, ooh, we might convert him to be a flatty, and he's from uh, academia. Oh, you're not converting this one. Jimbo, he's an agent. Jimbo, Jimbo, Jimbo serious question. Serious question, sit down. Did, did, did all you guys do really badly at school? Is that why you're against intelligence? No. 
Dude, no, that's I just a, a, a sweep, you know? You're saying, Jimbo Jimbo did all you. So you're not talking to me, so I won't answer you. All you can answer. I'm struggling to understand why you're against intelligence. Yeah, you're struggling, period, and I understand that. Well, everybody I'm struggles with that, it's a leading question. I did pretty question. damn well at math and at physics at school. And biology, by the way. And English, too. Did you, Owen? That's very good. No, I just don't get it why you're against intelligence. <laughs> don't intelligence. answer that question. That's, Nobody's a, against that's intelligence. called a straw, man. It's kind of yeah, weird. Total outrage. I mean, counterintelligence. I actually uh, did, did have a first-hand witness, though, standing there with me. So there were two people there at the story telling yeah. Do you have any talking snakes in it? Yeah, that's that's a red herring, Alan. It has nothing to do with. Yeah. It was a joke, a snake. Travis. Lighten up, lighten up. No, it wasn't. It's not a, a joke, joke because no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's a sneaky way of arguing. God, you guys are so uptight. <laughs> Good man. Yeah, nice yeah. diversion. That's what workouts do. Mental workouts. You get tight. Alan, show us the curve. Give me 100k, I'll take you there. Okay. 100k, give me your bank details and I'll put it into it. Thank you. I'll, I'll do a GoFundMe. I'll, I'll ask Ranty, he's got some good tips. <laughs> I, I want all your bank details. Or, or Riley. Put it put it in Riley's account. We'll get some ice creams. No way. Not, not in Riley, in yours. I'll give well, you 100k. Well, funnily enough, you've all paid for Riley's master's degree. Well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I will all pay for your retirement money that you're, you're, yes. you're lacking on. I'd, I'd love to take you to the curve and we could have an egg custard when we got there. Or perhaps if we're pushing the boat out. Of the well, that means I would no be glad to see you're against continued education and people, you know, wanting to further themselves, Alan, you know. What? I think anyone moving forward, like you, you just said something about, you know, uh, Riley's, you know, furthering himself academically a bit for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. He wanted to be a business manager in a restaurant and, and at, or uh, whatever skill or trade. Jimbo. What would be wrong Jimbo. with, you know, Jimbo. going forward Jimbo. with Jimbo. knowledge, new skills? Jimbo. Jimbo. You're it's no Jimbo. good. Okay, Jimbo. stay ignorant. Jimbo, I put 25 quid in. I'm getting my money's worth. I'm going to piss myself when I read that. Well, I, well, whatever, you know. I mean, you don't know. You have a crystal ball. You don't know what's going to happen in the future. What name did you put it in? I've, I've read it's this. Not really about I, that. Do you have Sarah. a prediction, you Alan? You have a prediction on what's going to happen? Well, I do. I've read the intro Alan? text to Anthony's GoFundMe page. What? There's 23 grammatical errors on it. I'm going to die <laughs> what, laughing. what name did you donate under, Alan? Does it matter? Anthony knows. Does he? We've, yeah. talked about, we've talked about it on Skype. Okay. So I've got my 25 quid and a signed copy. Yeah. You're a big Riley fan these days? Tony's okay. At least he tries. So you Adrian Sway? And he likes ice cream, right? Why? What, are you against Riley? Because he uh, doesn't agree with you, he does bully you a bit. Really, John I think Sharks, he does. Yes. Is that you? I think he does bully you, Owen. Yes, I think he does. Oh shit! I was being sarcastic, but yeah. I well, know. you did rage quit on the weekend. I heard. No, not really. I just hung up because I knew if I was going to hang around, it's just going to be no use. And then. The very next hangout, because then the hangout was cut off, and then the very next hangout, I was there immediately. So anyway, and why you change? So that, that's all I wanted. I would just wanted to drop the shit, you know. That's all. Okay, <laughs> over to you, Mark. Mark, what, what have you discovered? I really liked your. Oh, uh, your historical comparison with me and Riley, by the way. Yeah, that's because you were the hero. I know. Love it. Well, not even the it's hero, probably. the martyr that gets burnt to death. Yeah, that's the that's a nice part about it. <laughs> Let's hope hey, it doesn't listen, come to that. But for everybody that's listening, Michael Savitas is my hero. 
because he, he had a thought that was against everybody else and he was prepared to die for it. Thought control is immoral. And for anybody that insists that my opinion is right, deserves, well, I don't know, what do they deserve? Everybody should have, well, everybody they should clearly have haven't heard it. my opinion, that's for sure. Or at most a duel, basically. That's how I would see it. But yeah, burning someone at the stake, that's just like a criminal conviction and that doesn't make any sense. So that's... Yeah, but Michael Savitas was burned at the stake because it, 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 his opinion was different than, than the majority. Yeah, that's sick. That's yeah, wrong. and that's why I put you as the hero in the video. Yeah, I thank you and I hope I don't get burned to the stake, you know. <laughs> If somebody yeah, wants to duel me for it, okay. <laughs> well, Arwen, you, you, you are from an area rules. that was all part of the and step pace. Reformation. Had you ever heard of Michael Zapitas before that video? Sorry, uh, you broke up a little to me. Have you heard Say of again? Before? Had, had you ever heard of a character called Michael Zapitas? <sighs> I'm hearing noise. Zoom. No, maybe, maybe you could give us the broad strokes of why he was held accountable for heresy. Okay, the, the Protestant Reformation was against the Catholic Church, uh, but not long into the, the Reformation, there was also divisions within the, Pro the Protestant Reformation, and people started to make their own mind up about things. But very strong characters, such as Calvin, couldn't cope with other people, concluding different opinions than him even though the common enemy was the Catholic Church. Now, within the Flat Earth uh, community, the common Objection, objection, prejudice. Okay, can I carry on anyway? <laughs> Ob objection noted. Within the Protestant Reformation, it, beca it became an, an internal struggle. We hate the Catholics, but we also have an opinion that's strong enough to fight for and will kill you if you don't accept our position and that's the way the protestant reformation so fragmented so that now that we have presbyterians methodists anglican um baptists because we can't work it out ourselves and then we're prepared to kill other people because you don't believe what i believe and i strongly they feel were, they were that age i, I, strong, now, I, I, so I strongly much. feel that uh, riley is, is guilty of this. He can't cope with other people, concluding that gravity or eggs floating in a salt solution can have an, 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 another opinion than he has. And that's the reason why I made the video. All right, just a point of clarification. I, I, would, I would information a bit differently than Mark. I wouldn't say Calvin was as trivial and trite as Mark presented. It wasn't that John Calvin couldn't stand having a rival or a competitor in terms of what he thought. I do not, I do not condone uh, the behavior of John Calvin or the Catholic Church whenever they burned heretics at the stake or whatever, but it was simply the mindset of the time in that religious order that heresy of the magnitude that they considered Michael Servetus to purport was a serious issue. It wasn't just a trivial matter. It was a doctrinal issue that of the highest accord. So it's a little bit more, I think, substantial than simply saying uh, John Calvin didn't like having any adverse no, challenge. Cal Tra Travis, I totally disagree with you. But to burn somebody at the stake because they have a different opinion than you. To burn somebody at the stake. That's because not he, what it was. That's not what it was because. But there's John more Calvin at stake. A there's a opinion. political scenario at play, basically. Because, of the, opposite, because producer, of the reformation. Okay, Arwen, well, just, Arwen, can you just back away a wee minute, please? Travis, Servetus produced a pamphlet against Calvin's theology. And because of that, he was burnt at the stake. Uh, I'd, I'd have to. Uh, do you have a, a reference for that that I can look up? Ch ch check it. I don't have it at my fingertips, but check it. He, I, I he, did. I did. I, I taught a course on church history, and that wasn't the history I came across. 
Servetus was burned at the stake. Is there any yeah. justification for no, that? No, no. Mark, did you not hear what I said? I said I do not condone what John Calvin did. I'm saying that his his response was a grave doctrinal issue. Do you know what doctrine Servetus was denying? It, yes, I do, but it was not justifiable. But, what was it? The death was not justifiable. I didn't say that it was. Did you not hear me? I'm going to say it again. I didn't say that it was justified, Mark. Okay. I don't agree with, okay. with that behavior. I'm asking you what you understand the doctrinal difference to be. What was it? Um, Servetus uh, denied infant baptism, uh, hellfire, and the Trinity. That was the, the three uh, main issues. All right. Well, the Trinity was nice. the one that was more uh, substantial than the others, but yes, okay. And does anybody deserve to be burnt at the stake because they deny the Trinity? Are no, you asking but it me a is question of for the that political time? age? Uh, so, oh, wait, please black, back, back down, please. Say that again, are you a, Travis. Are, are you asking me that question for the fourth time? You said no earlier. I didn't get your answer then. Okay, what, what, what was the answer to that question that I asked four I, times? I said that John Calvin was not justified in putting Servetus to death. Okay. Oh, okay. So we're not, we're not, we're not in, in contention about this subject. No, I tried to make that clear from the very beginning. I thought, I, I thought that my preface before I got into my point was to say that I disagreed with that. <clears throat> uh, you know what? You guys got to do this on your own because I don't think many people are interested in this topic. Ah, uh, come on, Nami. We always talk about side issues. This no, is no, mate. No, mate. Really let's, let, listen. You, you guys are arguing about fictional stories. Okay? You're arguing about soap operas. No, no, no mate. Let, let, let's, let's just back up a bit. From, from, from 300 AD to 1500 AD, the Catholic Church taught that they were supreme, they had the ultimate authority, and then we had the Protestant Reformation. And I don't that, think that's true. Yeah, and, and, and out of that, there was a fragmentation. Now, what, 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 where, the, where I am at the moment is that we've had centuries of heliocentrism. We're coming out of that now to working out flat Earth. But we, do, we, we have to be careful not to fragment or not to, to beat each other because we have a different fl flavor of flat Earth. And that's what I see in this particular debate. Uh, oh, John you... Calvin? Oh, John Calvin. Mark, are you suggesting that Tony is um, a totalitarian theocracy? <laughs> well done. That's a great question. I, I'll, leave, I'll leave the question. I'm not going to fall for that. <laughs> oh, you're a character. No, no. Nathan's channel is the flat earth debate. Let's stick to that. But don't, don't let flat earthers start bitching against each other about silly little details that's that's all i'm saying that's my position In the okay well i'm just saying though. that christian theology and the history of these disagreements and vicissitudes of the various schisms of christianity that's all a side issue that's all an aside is it though? Yeah. Is it though? Um, no, I mean, because you know, the last couple of conferences that I've watched, you know, one of the reasons they're saying that the flat Earth is a secret is that they're hiding land and hiding God. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't. I mean, I don't see what I don't like this hiding God argument. I don't think it makes any sense. <clears throat> I mean, I don't think people would. People didn't seem to stop believing in God when they thought the Earth is a globe. I don't see what it has to do with the idea of creation either way. And, uh, the, the, the Catholic Church stands back in solidarity. They, they, they didn't fragment, but the Protestant Reformation did fragment. That, that's all my point. And I, I, I allow you to draw your own conclusions, but when somebody insists, in, insists that my conclusion is correct, and then they bring it up week after week after week, like Riley does, over this egg suspended in salt water solution. Hey, true it, seeker. It's just a sidetrack. It, it's, it's a nonsense. It's hey, a red seeker. herring. Hey, and doing? I'm fed up with listening to it. Hey, true seeker. So if they're not, no, me, if they're not hiding God, um, what say are hello to a new guest. Hiding? Sorry, Alan. Okay. Hello, true seeker. How are you doing? I think it's just, hey. just management, Alan. No, it's just management on a grand scale. Yes. I want to say hello to the new guest. Sorry, guys. Hello, Truth Seeker. Good to have you. Hello. Good to have you. Hi, Truth Seeker. How's the how's the gardening going? <laughs> I don't do much gardening. Oh, I thought you were a gardener. Sorry. I actually was 
quite interested at what Mark said. Uh, I think you got all caught up in the brushes, but I actually have a theology degree and I uh, studied moral conflict in my BA thesis. So roughly the idea is people get stuck in their own positions and they don't agree different viewpoints. So I have uh, a bit of history to what Mark was trying to say, but I guess you you got carried away with the particular details too much there. That's fine. Clarify if I've got any mistakes. I'm just talking about freedom of thought. That if you have a, a thought that's contrary to mine, you don't deserve to be burnt at the stake. Yes, and and I agree with that. Uh, I, from my view, viewpoint, uh, when you started talking about the historical details, that's not really actually even necessary for the argument that you're making. So you kind of got carried away about historical details that do not really matter. Um, one of the guys that I read uh, was a Russian literature guy called Mikhail Bakhtin. Uh, and his point was roughly speaking something like this. Uh, you have a belief system and in each belief system you have a number of dogmas and those are either correct or incorrect but they are things you believe in. And so you, so you have a list, let's use Christianity as an example. Uh, you have the triune God and then Christ died and all those things. And then you start adding more and more things. And then you come to creationism and uh, worship style and things like that. And uh, the point is, the longer you make the list of, I believe in th those things, and all Christians have to believe like I do on every detail, you create a problem. So whatever your belief system is, you need to like, be very careful about what you make the central argument and you let the details pass because you create sticking to your viewpoint. Everyone has to agree, me, agree with me on all details. Shout out to the dodo. Okay, so has anyone actually talked about why they created the globe? Is that what this thing's about? No, it's about freedom of choice, freedom of thought. Isn't, isn't the title Why They Lied, or Why NASA Lied, or Why? Big, 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 important question of this. Well, yeah, that, that's that's motive, isn't it? And that comes after the fact of have well, they well, lied. We already know. We've determined that there is a lie, so now let's get to the motive. We all, everyone here know there's a big fat lie. Now it's time to get to the motive. The motive is to create a unified narrative. The truth is, is that they're not hiding secret knowledge. They're hiding that they don't know. Nobody has the answers to these big questions. But that if how you do want you know that? Are you the authority figure? Wow! How did you find this? This isn't. This is. This is a huge discovery. They're. They're not hiding anything else. Wow! I didn't. Well, you that's can not extrapolate what I said. it from their own testimonies. So I'm saying that nobody knows what the stars are. Nobody knows what the planets. Are, the sun is, how it works, but in order to create a, a sense of strong authority, people who have had the authority are always the people who have the authority over the explanation of these big questions, the question of what the universe is fundamentally. So in order to create the Mysticism. globe as, as for a literate, pop, once the population became literate, the kind of comprehensive, the sort of comprehensivity of the answers that people would that would be required for people to have some sort of unifying narrative that everyone could at least be convinced of on some level. Uh, that, that That's really the underlying motive is just to create a, basically a religion that can encompass all other beliefs. So control, it doesn't have- It's religion to based on mysticism. It yes, have it does. To do that's what I'm saying, it's management. In order to control but that's the lives, definition of mysticism it's the foundation you need to get them into a grand unifying narrative so that they all feel that they have a place in this narrative they all basically uh 
uh, acquiesce to some sort of larger system of knowledge that which even their own cultural beliefs and individual beliefs can be subsumed within. TV a control method? Part of it's it. Influ it's an influencing method. It's not full control, but it's certainly influ influence. None of it is control because ultimately we have a choice to believe it or not. It's massive influence and it's the creation of a grand narrative. Right? But it will influence some and that will influence the, the, the masses, basically. It will There's no become over it will past. integrate itself culturally. It always does. So no me what flat no me where's, flat the, where's the central narrative? The central narrative is the narrative of are, is things like the globe, this are the body of science so called, the 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 and the um, the illusion of there being authority over and yeah, the illusion of authority over the, the big questions and these big subjects. But why the illusion of the globe? I mean, most people. I know why. Yeah, it promotes it's a false great scarcity. unifying narrative false that scarcity. can that can encompass these other belief systems, right? Like pe all the other religions managed to uh, acquiesce to the globe belief system, and while still maintaining their own individual doctrines. So it's a container for other belief systems. But hey, the, what is the what is the most disadvantage? Pardon what me. The most fundamental aspect of economics. Supply and demand. No, what if there's an infinite supply? What if there's an infinite supply? What will that do to their economic model? Will we all be poor then? If there's an infinite supply of everything, will we still be poor? Hmm? Will we be sovereign are then? We, Maybe we'll get we, our sovereignty are back. Are we poor? That's a relative term. I mean, it's affluence that creates poverty. Anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm, what, saying? what I'm trying to get at is most people don't even realize that we're living in a modern slavery system. They don't realize the debt-based banking system. They don't think, I think they a lot of people realize freedom. that. I think a lot of people well, realize people that. People are slowly doing... catching on. That knowledge has been out there for almost 20 years. 15 years at least. The knowledge has so been out there for as long as in the sub mainstream. That knowledge, that knowledge gets supported by the globe. Even someone like me who had that knowledge for 20 years could go, well, you know what? We live on a spinning ball. You know, we're not finding any more jungles or any more forests. You know what? Maybe the price of timber should exponentially increase. You know, but there's a limited Because supply. it's not entangled with it, but they are working on it with their alien uh, connection and all that stuff. So it goes, yeah, I, I would, it goes I, much further than that. There's the, the, the scarcity, the idea of scarcity, yes, that's, that's another form of social management. I mean, that's why they're lying about the global population being 7 billion people, right? We don't even have any clue how many people are on the earth. They can easily just lie to us about that. We're just used to what we're perceiving around us as being the population. And so we have no way of personally apprehending the truth about such matters, right? But clearly... There's not a, some sort of incredible resource shortage. The resources are continually being available despite all of the, the exploitation of, of yeah, them. What, I, what I'm saying is the globe promotes a false scarcity. And it always, yeah. supports, it always supports them in their financial control models. So not only are they controlling the science, they're controlling the finances. And it's all about controlling our daily lives. They never give us enough. They're That's always right. keeping us on the treadmill. Chase that carrot. Chase that carrot. Right. Yeah, called management. So is your argument based on the infinite plane? Because you're talking about be there not being that much scarcity as we believe. Well, so here, we, here's we, an example of, quote, scarcity in what I call supply-side democracy. Cigarettes, we all know what they are. People don't understand when I explain you can be smoking cigarettes from 1970, packaged and stored underground in humidity and temperature controlled environment and they were packaged and priced way back when and it's how many years later and you're smoking cigarettes that are from the 70s in one day California can produce enough wine and alcohol beer to supply Canada for a year yeah so we have like a uh, trade restrictions because well, again we couldn't compete with one day's production of California. Our, our nation's beer and wine production could not match what California can produce in one day. Jimbo, do you know how business works? Absolutely. It's called trade deals. Amazing. 
So Numi, what what would be the disadvantage of the globe over the flat plane? Well, like I say, it's I think it's about creating the illusion of knowledge, right? It's about creating the illusion of in order to facilitate this a sense of there being an authority, an authority that every that can subsume all other types of previous authority, like previous. religious authorities. So it's like managing it's cattle, like, dumbing like, down the it's masses. Like, hey, hey, I'm still talking. Okay. They claim they know how much the stars weigh and what their compositions are and exactly they have all this incredible detailed knowledge about things that are totally unverifiable, totally unfalsifiable claims, right? And it's it's that kind of pretense of knowledge of things that are not knowable or outside of our reach of 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 uh, what we could measure or apprehend that creates a, a kind of um an authority structure over reality itself, right? Whereas if they were to acknowledge how mysterious the situation really was, people it would it would create it would cause people to want to explore these things themselves, which would fracture the grand narratives. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you hated the show, you know exactly what to do. You've probably done it already. But if you liked it, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!